Hey guys, my name is Dion. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you are back again, thank you for being here. I don't even know why I just jumped back on this insanity train. I've done online dating in the past and my opinion of it is that regardless of the online dating site, it's the same types of people. Back in the day, um, I was divorced in 2012. I've been on Plenty of Fish off and on. I've been on Christian Mingle. I've been on, I want to say Match, but I'm not sure. And I was on something else. Like not all at the same time, but just through a period of like four years, I was on and off different dating websites. And it never worked out in a way that I was content. And I would always end up getting frustrated and just like delete the profile. And so I was like, do I want to get back on another dating app? And I live in Delaware, and the poly community in Delaware, the few munches I went to, everyone knew everyone else. It was kind of like the six degrees of separation thing, except it might have been like three degrees of separation. Like everyone, now granted, why are you talking about a group of maybe 15 people? But everyone knew everyone. Most people had dated one or a handful of the people in the room. There were some people who were way younger than me. I'm 49 and they were looking for a third person for their relationship. And, and then some people, they have different communication styles than me where they're like, oh, if I met someone new, I wouldn't even tell them I was poly till like the third date. And I'm like, what? I'm like, you should talk about that stuff up front. Like first date, I'm like, I'm polyamorous. I'm in the BDSM and leather community. <laughs> you know, this is going on in my life. I'm dealing with my mom in the nursing home. I mean, like, I put stuff up out front. So that people can make an informed decision on whether or not they want to invest their time and energy into me. Like, don't tell me significant things, you know, a month later. <laughs> and I don't want someone to catch feelings, as they say. And then I tell them, oh, yeah, I'm poly. And they're like, wait a minute, what? Like, I'm not going to be the only one kind of thing. And so I don't want to do that to people. And I don't want people to do that to me. And so there were just like a lot of little, you know, things like that, that I was just kind of like, mm, no. And, and also for everyone to know everyone and for most of them to have been with each other or this used to be her boyfriend that was my boyfriend and her girlfriend is also my girlfriend it just felt a little incestuous to me <laughs> i'd rather <laughs> and maybe i'm delusional about the poly community but i want someone where we can go somewhere and out of 10 people seven of them you haven't dated <laughs> and so <laughs> And so then I thought, okay, I will broaden my net, you know, expand my area, go to munches and things in Philadelphia, go to things in New Jersey to meet people. And then as I sat back and thought, because I, I, I'm a realistic person. So I'm like, if I meet someone that's in Philadelphia or like an hour away in Jersey, like, do I have the time and energy to invest into that relationship? And so, but in my mind, I'm like, okay, do I want to drive almost two hours to see him and be there for a few days and then come home and then drive like another hour and a half to go spend time with someone else? And I'm just like, I really don't want to do that. My my hope is to find a local-ish partner <laughs> so that we can do those spur-of-the-moment things or at least schedule, you know, day trips or things like that. And so I created a profile on Bumble. Um, I am in a couple poly groups on Facebook and they were like, oh, Bumble's a good place to meet people. Okay, Cupid is a good place because, okay, Cupid, they have questions about, you know, non-monogamy, kink-related questions and things like that. And so I went on Bumble, created a profile, and I initially I thought it was a great idea because the women initiate contact, which means I won't get a lot of nonsense in my inbox, which I always used to do before, or they just look at your pictures like, oh, let's go on a date. What's your number? I'm like, dude, I don't even know you. And have you even read what I'm about? Or they don't have anything on their page. And so it was just a mess back then. And so I thought Bumble would be a great idea, but um, people don't read profiles or if I initiate, you know, conversation, they actually don't want to meet. And I'm just like, well, the point is to meet people, right? I thought. Um, and it's to the point where <laughs> I'm contemplating just coming off a of Bumble. <laughs> and I've exhausted all the possible matches. Um, and then it, it recirculated. 
and I ended up with new possible matches, which I was just looking like, no. Because for me, and these are things I look for. When I look at someone's pictures, I look to see if I feel like, or if it looks like from their pictures, that I would fit into their world and if they would fit into mine. And what I mean by that is, um, one of the things is, is I am disabled. I deal with chronic joint pain. They finally diagno diagnosed me with fibromyalgia. I'm also prone to migraines. And if I have a migraine, if it's bad enough, I'm down for like a day, sometimes two days in a row, depending on how bad they are. And so I have like limitations to the things I could do physically. So if someone, they have pictures, they're skiing, you know, they're on boats, they're hiking, which I do hike and I do like to hike. And I can hike about hmm, four and a half, five hours. As long as I have snacks and water. <laughs> but then I'm out for the next two days because my body needs to recuperate. And so if they have all these pictures of doing all this super active things and their profile says, oh, I go to the gym every day and I do this and that. I'm like, I know I can't keep up with this person. So I'm like, okay, swipe to the left. You know, that's, that's not for me because I don't want to slow anybody down either. Or if I don't drink, I don't have a problem being around people who do. But if every picture is them with a, a glass in their hand or a bottle or all of their pictures of them and their friends in a bar, I'm like, okay, well, if this is really their lifestyle, that's not going to fit. And then I'm also looking at who's in the picture. As a person of color, if all of your pictures are you with non-people of color and, all, and you're always in a bar, well, not always, but like five out of your seven pictures from the bar, I'm like, am I going to fit there? Like, will they want to bring me around their friends? Ironically... I've come across people who drink and will not date someone who doesn't. I don't have a problem being around people who drink, but some people who drink have a problem with being around people who don't. And I'm like, is that like a closet alcoholic thing? Like, I don't understand why they wouldn't. Because I don't make people feel bad. I'm like, oh, as long as you're not a, a mean drunk and as long as you're not falling down sloppy drunk, I don't care. Drink all you want. But people will not. Some men in the past like would not date me because I don't drink. And so I think about that too. Like I'm looking at this picture, this group shot. <laughs> and I'm like, would they invite me out with their friends to a bar? I'll drink a ginger ale. I'll drink a ginger ale with cranberry juice. Or, you know, they might think it's a drink even though it's not alcoholic. But, and so I look at that. Or if the majority, the majority of their pictures are with them and their children. Which I have an issue with putting pictures of yourself with your children online. But anyway, I'm like, would they bring me around their kids? You know what I mean? So I, I try to think of it realistically. And then in my world, you know, I'm involved in the leather and also the BDSM communities. Like, would they participate in that with me? Or in the least, be okay with me being active in that community? And I would like to find someone who would participate in those types of things with me. I want someone who's going to be involved in every aspect of my life as much as possible, or at least as much as they're comfortable with. Like, I don't want to never go to a play event with a partner like ever i mean i'll go alone but if i'm with someone i want to be with someone you know if i'm still going everywhere alone then why do i have a partner <laughs> if that makes sense and so these are all the different things i think about when i'm looking at profiles i'm looking at pictures or if they don't have any information in their bio and they're just like asking me i'm open book and i'm like i want to know something before i put my toe in your pond you know what I mean and so that's like a swipe to the left like put some effort into you trying to find someone because even though it is primarily okay look at the pictures I'm not a shallow person I want to know who you are inside and I also want to see what your grammar looks like because I want to be able to have an intelligent conversation and if your spelling is really horrible I'm just like am I going to be able to really conversate with this person like on an intellectual type level thing you know so so it's just like different things and another thing which is going to sound bad I love pets and pets love me however my allergies and my asthma do not and so if someone is like oh I have like three dogs and a bird and two cats I'm like swipe to the left because that's a health hazard to me <laughs> and so again I'm being realistic like, I need to be able to breathe freely around you <laughs> and not have an asthma attack just to see you. <laughs> and so, I mean, it, this may seem really trivial, but for me, it's important because I need to be intellectually stimulated. 
we need to be able to have rational, realistic conversations. I also need to feel comfortable around your friends. They need to be comfortable around me. Also, your children, if you have children, if they're at the age where you're still co-parenting or they live with you. And also, my brain just froze. <laughs> oh, I need to be comfortable in your environment, which is where the pets come in at. And also, for pet owners, if they're going to come see me for days at a time, where's your pet going to go? Or if we're going on a trip or a day trip or a weekend trip, where's your pet going to go? And if I'm allergic to your pet, then it's not going to be a comfortable environment for me to be in. And... So again, it may seem trivial, but these are the things I want to know up front. And even though a lot of it is, for some people, it's just based on the pictures and what somebody looks like. For me, it goes a lot deeper than that because I really want to connect with someone primarily up here. And I told people, if you stimulate my mind, my heart and my body will automatically follow. It doesn't go in the reverse for me. And... And also, I'm not looking for hookups or casual relationships or casual sex either. So all of those things are like, swipe to the left. And so my question to you guys is, what do you think about all of this that I said? <laughs> what are deal breakers for you? Do you do online dating or not? <laughs> and if you have, what was your experience? And if you found success, please, 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 please share your stories. I love hearing success stories. And so that's going to be it for this video because my time is running out. And you will see me in the next video. Thanks, guys. Bye.